And the next time he goes, like something more, you really cranking on that. Yeah, really good. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. 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 We've been lucky that we've had about three months straight. Yeah. 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 Good to go. Yep. Do we have members from the public out there? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay. I'll we'll, we'll have to be back there. <coughs> yeah. State, local we don't government get. attorneys. Right. Let's get, get started. Don't Gentlemen, don't welcome. We've got a couple of things on our agenda. We will review last month's minutes next month, correct? Okay. Um, any other matters before we jump into them? Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> Good to see you. Um, let's jump into the first button. Mr. Putnam is here. Second. Seat to my right, and uh, he is proposing an easement on his property. You see the location there, Secretary's Road. <clears throat> um, that's uh, uh, he his property drains to the north there, <clears throat> going on uh, to. <clears throat> Buck Island Creek, and that ultimately goes into the Rivanna. You see at the top right of that location map. He uh, has uh, nearly 70 acres there. It's in three parcels, and I understand you purchased that in the night, mid 90s or so? Uh, probably 92. Okay. And um, I guess it, it had some logging. There's a lot of logging in this area. And uh, he's allowed that now growing back into some, some hardwoods. Um, we're going to eliminate five dwellings, um, the different development rights on the parcels. Um, we'll sort of dive into some of the maps here, give you a better idea. The image you're seeing on the top right is a 2018 imagery. Um, so that's a little dated, as you'll see. I have some more recent ones to share with you, but um, shows the parcel, all three parcel together um, in the blue. We're, we're suggesting some, maybe some restrictions on any accessory structures or any replacement of dwellings. There's three dwellings there currently that you could see. Um, the uh, photo there on the bottom right is the entrance going into the property off of uh, Secretary's Road. Um, so this is a more recent photograph from uh, Google. So you'll see um, their areas circled, not pr the precise boundaries, but you sort of get the idea And that parcel to the south has been logged. I, I guess that's, I, I measured that is like 750 acre of clearing they did and if you're familiar with this area that's where um they're proposing woodridge solar development um that parcel this nine parcels there together you'll see again the yellow is is our subject parcel that we're looking at the woodridge solar is nine parcels 2200 acres and they're proposing here, this is some of the doc 
approvals and 650 acres of the solar panels. And I just thought that was relevant. It is, it's not really part of this property ownership or anything of that nature. It's just a matter of proximity to what the work we're doing here that I thought might, that might be of interest for you to see. Um, this is resources to be protected, which of course, normally we're looking at steep slopes, streams, all the, all the things. We're, we're not really have any, any streams mapped on the property and blocking the property, I would sort of differ with that conclusion that we don't, we don't have any streams, but I guess in our realm, we, we look at the USGS topographic mapping and you'll see what's a intermittent, what's a perennial, um, or if you talk to the US Supreme Court, I'd say they would think these are all jurisdictional waters because they logically do connect to a navigable water. But anyway, the, um, the survey, I think I mentioned, shows the surveyor said it was a stream and the forestry plan indicates there's a stream. But anyway, I feel it's a it's an important resource. We see some wetland areas there. Um, the stream on the bottom right is where it exits the property. The uh, parcel is bounded on its north by uh, high tensile, tensile power lines. Um, the photo there on the lower left is showing <clears throat> essentially the area that's been cleared, the drives, the power line going in there and the three dwellings. And I measure that to be around three acres um, and the rest is, is forested. Um, this area is located within the Southern Albemarle Rural District, which is broad going pretty much down to the James, starting like pretty far north um, out, outside the city. But um, they list that as non-contributing, but it's still within that district. Um, so what we're proposing here, um, the restrictions, um, the, this hopefully I've, I've related what, what the landowners have, have, um, have indicated to me their desires were um, not to have any more dwellings or subdivisions, but we were allowing for some additional um, renovations or um, modifications to the existing dwellings and like I said, the improvements proximate to what's already there. So we were, were really stressing the natural forest. Um, you know, since we're not really showing all the stream protections or some of the things we would normally put into these proposals, we're, we're stressing the natural forest protections. Um, we had a board member inquire about the soil mapping says that this is this is ideal for pine plantation. Um, but again, the landowners, I think, are, are enjoying the, the wooded, hardwood mix in there that's, that's taken over since it was long in the past. But um, the provisions we're suggesting here are um, removal of trees just in more um, circumstances. They, they've done quite a, quite a bit of work, I understand, in removing a lot of the invasives which is a nice contribution to the community um, to keep that from <clears throat> spreading certainly to other areas. But I mean, it's, it's pretty much this little island here that we enjoy of, of their property that they're wanting to put under easement and bringing before the board. Um, the, I don't know if the uh, landowner would want to share more about his forestry management plan. Um, the, I think that was done in 2013 and the, the, what they indicated to their professional was we would like to promote uh, you know, wildlife and habitat and, and this, the aesthetic water quality. So those, those things I think are all important and in, in line with what we're promoting. Um, and that's, that's really all the slides I had for the board. If you had questions for me or, or for the donor, I would, Welcome that. Two, two uh, questions here. A simple one maybe on this slide. There, there appear to be a contradiction between the last paragraph of the forest provision and the remainder. And that 
do. With the last paragraph, you get this through that you would plan to harvest this for timber, whereas the others speak to protecting it for its natural habitat. Yeah, there's no harvesting of timber uh, anticipated. Only uh, the only thing that would be cut would be there's a two acre uh, really thick pine at the very back of the property, and that should be thinned by my forest. Uh, stewardship plan, uh, but but we have no intention of doing any logging on the property. We want uh, we, we would like we would like it to eventually just be native hardwoods and and just a mixed deciduous forest, is, and that's what it's trying to be. Um, would you consider changing the terms then of the forest plan to reflect that? I think, I think yeah. those terms need to be in there, though, because if you look under three, there are some provisions for uh, cutting for improving the status of the forest. So there could be old pines left over in them. I'm not saying specifically about this property, but we often find that there are leftover pines that yeah, could no. stand to be removed. So those terms are in there so that if some removal is needed, that is in concert with the intent of the section, that we still get the pre-harvest plan so we know it's going to be done right. Maybe you can just clarify that it's consistent with the foregoing. Right, I'm thinking, can we loop it? Um, say the pre-harvest plan shall be submitted for approval, dot, 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 before the proposed date, number, and we would strike material timber harvest, and we'd add language saying for the purposes and subsection three there. That, that's what because I Because I, I agree with, with, say, no timbering, and then you have a thing that says timbering, you do have an internal, yeah. but, but so I would suggest striking of material timber harvest proposed date of cutting subject to subsection three, cutting of trees. The, the second question, that's virtually what I had in mind. Okay. The second question has to do with Woodward Silva. What, what we would not want to see is a pre-existing utility easement on this property that would be construed to allow Woodward Solar to come across your property in a way that would be destructive. There's not a significant uh, utility easement on that property. There is, a, there is just a, a small easement that brings power to the two houses that are you know, on the property. So uh, I can't foresee, uh, and, and we have been in communication with Woodbridge Solar throughout the whole process of their developing this site. And they, they, you know, have plenty to do over there. They have no reason to come to our property and they have no way to come to our property legally. And they've got the, that large uh, transmission line. Pardon? They've got that large transmission line. That's not that's on our true. property. Right, that's what I meant, but they have access. To yeah, they have, a, they have all their access. I mean, in terms of distributing their power, already lined up. The transmission line is not on this property. It is not on our property, no. The message is talking about inviting people into the house. Is there, is there, this is a legal question, is there language we can put in the easement that would basically protect, it, protect the property from um, Proceedings that would try and bring electric electric lines across it, or somehow connect this solar utility. Um, Any attempt to add a utility easement would have to be approved by everybody who holds an interest in the property, which would include the landowners in this body. That's going to be the case for any of our easements, whether it's written in there or not. It's, they can't get a new utility easement or access easement or any other kind of easement without the approval of the existing bodies that hold a right to that land first. So, I mean, we can put it in there, but it's already, it's has the law. It's built in. Yeah, like I was showing you, the, the power line running to the top of the screen is the back of their property. So, I mean, they, that solar facility, you know, has access. That's what made it attractive to them to be able to lock into that 
And I think they're proposing pollinator species or some different things there. I don't know exactly. Yeah, they have, but... they have a lot of uh, hopeful uh, concepts about that, yeah. But, but they're, they're actual, they're not accessing the high tension power lines that go behind my property. They're actually uh, building their substation on a, a different uh, high tension power line, which is uh, on the other side of Secretary's Road. Uh, I can't, okay. it's kind of, it'd be hard to show it to you, but it's kind of to the left of all of that. Uh, right, right there, there you go, which is quite away from our property. And so, and how we're going to get there is, you know, they say they're going to put all their lines underground or on the ground or something. They're not going to have uh, poles or, or so. I don't, I don't know what. <laughs> that's all. Uh, that's all magic, as far as I can tell. What they're planning on doing there. But, which is all the more reason why we need this little island of uh, of, uh, of natural uh, forest land right in the middle of it. I have a couple of questions just in looking at different maps, but on the county map, which is that 2018 one, what what is JD Land Holdings you're adjoining? JD Land, is that That's behind You're there? here, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that used to be uh, a property that was all uh, native hardwood, mixed hardwood forest, just like ours, uh, for 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 about the same amount of time as ours was, you know, fifty years, um, and uh, and that was bought by um, uh, what's his name? It's JD Land Holdings. They own over 2,000 acres surrounding that. So they own all that land behind me now and all the land across the street where all this solar farm is getting ready to go in, okay? Uh, they're leasing that, the, the solar, they're not selling the land, they're leasing out the ability to put solar panels on Oh, so land. part of the solar farm will be on that. All, it's all on their it's land. It's all on that. Yeah, it's okay. all on JD Holdings land. Oh. Which, like I say, used to be uh, forest, but uh, will, will not be for a long time, I'm afraid. Yeah, <laughs> pretty scaled. Maybe it's yeah. pretty scaled down, yeah. And the other question, oh, since oh. your par property is held in three parcels and you're um, extinguishing five division rights, how, how does that There's how not, does that there's not five division rights. I think they worded that as five possible houses okay there's only one development right left oh, five, you're right five potential dwelling okay, units so, and each of the other properties uh, have the ability to have an agricultural you know 21 acre by right house. so there's no division rights there's one division right uh, one development right okay and that, that stays or that goes that goes away. Okay. And then any dwellings, five dwellings go away. I got you. Yeah. So okay. just the, the, the existing dwellings is all that we want to maintain. The ones that are there and, now, and right. Perpetuity. So the exercise that we undertake is looking at the tax maps from 1979 and see the configuration of these properties and the 80 rules by the county assigned certain development rights and then subsequent divisions. Here's the plat um from 95 and then you can see on the middle on the left there it is right. since there's so many division rights you can have so many two acre lots and then the remainder if they're 21 acres you can have development by rights so that's where we get our sort of dwelling units so there is some math kind of involved to um, figure yeah. that out in the original purchase of the property, there were four parcels, so and right. there were five division rights originally for the entire uh, piece of land before we divided it into four parcels. I, I, we often get that question: how many development rights do we have? And it's actually an official determination, so we're wary of saying absolutely this is what you got. But for our purposes, we just yeah, it's a significant. You to um, we have a no division expectation. Your plan then is to leave these as three separate parcels, or to combine the three. Uh, I'm, my plan is to leave them. You know, 
they could be combined, but I was, I don't need to combine them in order to have this. I mean, the only reason why I wouldn't combine them is just the added expense of doing it. And for what reason, I'm, I don't know. I don't have a reason. Things are template, or at least the draft will treat them as, as one as one part. Okay. So that's how we typically treat them. Yeah. That's a problem. Think with the wire. Say no division to remain as a single unit under a single ownership. I forget the exact wording, but basically that's what it says. Is it may be two or four, 17 parcels, but it has to remain as one single ownership, treated as one property. But that's our yeah. That's what you said. It's in the template. But, but you won't be able to sell off one parcel. Right. Yeah. So get you at the same place. The same place. Yeah. All right. It seems straightforward. Would you like a motion? Absolutely. I'll make it. So approved. So approved. So so with that one amendment on the forest. Yes. Second. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, it's really it's, it's a good thing all those solar panels are <laughs> 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 I can solar you. panels, the pine forests, and the wineries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're losing a lot of forests. <laughs> we could visit more about some next steps. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Are you ready for our next? Please test the proceed. All right. Here. This is item four. It's a Castlewood Farm proposal. Mr. Turner is here to advocate for his project. Um, just a little background. He he approached us in Feb the eighth, end of February, inquiring about this, and I had just started um, my work, and you know maybe delayed, delayed him a bit to try to get me up to speed on you know working with you know working with the landowners. But um, we had some discussions about his thoughts for the property. I guess you you had purchased this uh, like a year. It's about a year ago. Um, yeah. Two thousand and two. Um, a year ago, and there's uh, 22. Qu quite a bit of uh, historic uh, resource out here, which I find amazing. But we'll show show you some of the some of those here in a second. Um, see the location, in the top right is right right there below Interstate um, 64 and um, Route 250. Um, so you can see the proximity to Crozet. Um, we did the same math exercise again with the development rights, and you know, we would be eliminating you know, certainly the potential there to divide that property as road access on uh, Birches Creek. As I guess that's how you pronounce it, Birches. Yeah, Birches. Birches. I want to call it Birch or something. And he has access on Patterson Mill as well. And this this map I thought ended up a little too fluorescent, so I apologize <laughs> on your eyes there. But if you'll see the, the green are the existing conservation easements, so we don't abut those, but you can see there's you know several in the area. And on this on this screen, I wanted to just share the um, the um, attributes. The Stockton Creek is the main channel running through there and you can see the 100 year flood plain is mapped. Um, we do have some steep slopes. I have another slide that you can maybe see those a little clearer. Um, coming through here, Stockton Creek is draining like 18 square miles. So it's a pretty good sized stream and that ultimately drains into the Rivanna water supply. So we find that to be one of our priorities. So again, on the on the top left, you got a better sense of the um, parcel with the steep slopes um, outlined floodplain. The the cluster of, of buildings you see mostly on the lower left, um, southwest portion of the property, and all, all the way to the right there. If you're familiar with that, uh, VDOT area headquarters, which you know abuts us. We don't really see it from from this parcel, but. Uh, 
Um, so it really stands out there. That's off of, I guess, Patterson Mill is how you access that property. Lower left, you see Stockton Creek. That's close to the entrance um, coming in off of Birch's Creek Road. Um, the next slide on, on, the, on the bottom in the middle is some of those older st structures. Um, we've got a lot of historic documentation on this property and some dates. And I think this is a 1790, that, um, that house there on the left, which I understand we're going to try to maintain that. There's some older structures that have been lost due to time. When, when he got it, they were not there, but I'm going through our county website with legit list improvements. And there's you know, literally 20, the old barn, the old shed, the old well, the old granary. <laughs> You know, so not all those are there, and that was an effort just to, to just try to map those resources. And I guess as part of like a baseline, we'd actually say, okay, this is what's here on this date, move forward. But anyway, that was a challenge. The bottom right is is a barn there, which doing work out of there. It's kind of got some cool old you know, wood inside there. In the bot on the top uh, right there, the power line is is over to the East of the property, you can see that swath coming from the bottom to the, the top, sort of adjacent to the um, VDOT facility. So that's got that high tensile power line and you're looking at, looking up to the north uh, at some of those steep slopes there. So the most, most of his steep slopes are forested. I guess that utility has clears that and maintains that, that cleared. And then that slide there to the right is the Stockton Creek further on into his property where it abuts to the south up on the right in that photo is, is are the steep slopes. So we're hoping maintain those vegetated um, buffers uh, as a condition and just makes sense could be really difficult to, to do much else. I know uh, I share some sentiment um, with, with Mr. Turner, I, you know, I think he had some recommendations about a forestry plan and they say, cut the, tree, cut the trees down, which I guess that's a forester sort of approach, but you know, I think he would much rather preserve the trees to, to, to some extent, but you know, that's sort of an aside here. So again, the, uh, the re resources, we, we, we pretty much check all, all these boxes, steep slopes, you know, measuring these on our, on our GIS. So it's as, only as accurate as the, the information I have, but 15 acres of the steep slopes. We have quite a bit of that 100-year floodplain um, coming through there that we would hopefully be able to maintain the function of a flood floodplain, which are many as we're real, realizing now, some of our weather. Um, Again, this drains into ultimately the Rivanna Reservoir. Um, we've got some decent agricultural soils on the bottoms as well as on the uplands, not, not the steep areas, certainly not listed as, as prime, but um, decent soil to keep, keep some of that farm land <clears throat> protected. Uh, of course, uh, 250 is, is considered a scenic road, byway. Um, and I think both the 64 and 250 are in entrance corridors. So the county has an interest in the view, certainly in the with developments that do or do not occur, that they would be compatible with site and vi visual um, aesthetics and setbacks off the road and so forth. So I think we'd be able to you know, maintain that, at least on this parcel. Um, you know, I mentioned the conservation easements in that area. Um, we are within the Greenwood Afton Rural Historic District. Um, you know, the natural resources, but of course, oftentimes the, the architectural resource comes up in our discussions and we, we prompt our <clears throat> donors to, to maintain those. Um, Mr. Turner's done apparently a lot of renovations of historic properties in his career. So I guess we want to encourage that work in maintaining these old structures. But I guess there's some sort of mention in there. I know that one of the board members had inquired as to whether it was like a requirement. Uh, you know, I think 
you know, we would just ask that they, they try to maintain what, you know, what they can, or I'm not sure what the formality of no willful demolition is, but again, in our baseline documentation, we can sort of show you what's there. And, um, and from several months now visiting the property, lots of improvements going on. So I think those, those are all working in our, in our favor. Um, again, the restrictions that we're asking for are fairly typical for this type of property. Um, I'm sorry about my the other computer is sort of blocking my screen there. But again, the, 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 the discussion I had about a lot of these structures, we, we, we try to go back and forth as to what's here, what's nowhere here, what's being improved. Um, so there's the, the main house, which is considered contributing um, to the historic resource. It's, none of these are listed with the National Historic Register or the state, and they're not, um, they're not eligible. And you know, reading some of those documents, it says, well, nobody important lived here, right? So <laughs> I guess you don't get listed, but I mean, make some comments about the, you know, you know, the structures, but you know, they're, they're not um, eligible for listing. I think um, that means nobody rich up there. <laughs> Until now, now we got. Now we can. You can leave Not your mark. <laughs> um, I I just will say, and something I caught as of late, this lower um, item riparian buffers. We this is a sort of a standard cut and paste, if you will. I indicated we wouldn't have um, vehicle crossings. There is an existing Ford there, so I, I think we might want to strike that because you would. I guess still want to continue getting your yeah, well that's, track, the, that's the only way to get to the back of the property yeah, is to drive so across the I creek would, but I it's think low this has to be yeah. stricken from this but it's not a it's no nothing has ever been done to it other than right just, and i mean you see the approach it's area. not it's not eroded i mean and i think you're on like a shallower riffle in the stream so it's you know stable you know that helpful in that regard but i i, I want to restrict that vehicle crossing because that indeed is what what we're seeing there are, are you suggesting no additional structures beyond the ones on the top right? Yeah, we've been back and forth about this a lot. And I guess what I'm hoping to do is just to maintain the current um, structures that are there, which are mostly agricultural buildings. Um, and there's three houses, it's a main house and two cottages. And all of those structures are located up in the front five acres. And that's one thing I think makes it perfect for an easement candidate because um, the rest of the property is pretty much natural and nothing's ever been done to it. So I don't plan on, I mean, as part of this exercise, I'm willing to give up the other division rights and development rights and everything for property. So there'll be three legal residences on the two cottages and the main house. I don't, I don't think the intent was to prohibit accessory and new accessory and farm structures. We should have been more clear about that in the, in the summary. This was there, but we should have said. Uh, so we're going to do essentially ex, standard, you know, standard terms. terms for accessory structures. And, and then no willful, um, and no willful demolition, demolition of the two that are listed as contributing structures. Well, the, the, there's a lot of buildings on the property now, but it's possible that I'll have some horses on part of the property at some time in the future. And if that happens then there might be that's the question uh, might be do you want to stall restrict, or something do you want to be restricted or prohibited from doing that and i'm hearing that and that's not the no case. i wouldn't want to do that i think that'd be foolish it's being hate at the moment and that's possibly what will always be i'm not really interested in getting into too many agricultural endeavors at the moment but i might have some horses out there which would require some stable somewhere on the property probably what's the current template restriction on the size of the test restriction I remember correctly, it doesn't Accessory. give an exact size. It says that we've gone through accessory structures need to be. Clear, I've, clear I've measured all the properties. To the, the main dwelling. I'll pull it up real quick and look. Yeah. I, I, I think the last time I Yeah, you might be thinking farm buildings. Yeah, farm yeah. buildings up to 2,500 feet. Barn or stable would be considered presumably a Give me just a second. The reason I ask it in, the, in this case is there, there are a large number of other structures which are important to the integrity and, and your intention. Um, but envisioning future owners, 
this could be a very different property if somebody, someone were to build a uh, 10,000 foot party barn. Well, there already is a, that barn's probably 4,000 square feet now. That's right. all the property. On your property? Yeah, the no, barn in the middle. You can see yeah. the roof in the middle. It's a pretty large structure. Our fear would be that it turns into a wooded event. That, that's not listed on the right unless I'm like, yeah. Just for clarification, on your form, mm -hmm. when you get to dwellings, just to clarify, if you want to just, you know, you've got one, the main house, two story, 3,300 square feet, that stays 33, or you get to expand it, or? Well, I think we've, from what I understand, it could, I am, it's going to take an extensive amount of work to get the house level. I mean, it's, as you can see, just from the overhead picture, it's, it's even like the 1790, yeah. I mean, right. you know, some of you may not even spend the night there. At the moment, uh, so, this was this was um, Pooh's, yeah, Pooh Johnson's, that's correct. yeah, yeah, yeah. Her property was her. So, um, I'm sorry, your question. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just was making it. I just wanted to be real clear, and kind of uh, what he was referring to. So, I'm looking at your form. You've got existing three existing dwellings, one main house, two story, 3,300 square feet. Does that get to grow? Does that? Do My understanding is it can grow up to 20 percent of whatever if we do this easement. All right, and then the second says the existing structure is 1376 square feet behind the main house. And then it says to be replaced with two over two farmhouse up to 15. So that's new going to happen. Yeah, I'm going to build, I'm going to replace the existing, that existing building, which you can see in the picture, which is an inhabitable and falling down basically. Right. With another cottage on the property up by the other cottage. It'll be smaller than that house, it'll be a smaller building but similar size. It, it, the 20 percent you mentioned a minute ago? Well that's what I read in some of the that you can't expand is that correct if you do renovations on it. You just need to clarify. Yeah yeah I'll apologize I I was doing more of like the inventory. Yeah <laughs> like your baseline hey this is what's here 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 and I do plan to renovate the house but, it's not um, really I, I didn't intend that to be a restriction, but that's how it certainly is written because it's in the restriction. What restrictions then did page? You, well, we need to, we certainly need to specify that. But if there was a guy in one of the buildings burned up, then the question becomes what, what do you replace it with? Um, and I, does it have to be the exact same square footage of the existing? My understanding it can be up to 20% more than what they're now. That restriction is somewhere. That's a number we can clarify. Yeah. It seems like offering you some flexibility that once you get. And that's plenty. It's, I've already got a building permit to work on the house and to do what I'm going to do. And it's, it's yeah. that criteria. Is this the 30, is this number one, the main house? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. So the middle picture down here where the cursor is, that building's going to leave. Yes. And then go over to where the cottage is, like closer to the road? Yes, that's okay. correct. So is it 3,300 Venice Square? And both all will be a two over two farmhouse. It looked like they were built in 1800s. Is it 3,300 Venice Square feet? Is that the current status of the house or is um, that? James has the number, I forget it. Do you remember the number we measured? The That's what house. you've got on here. Is that, is that what's current. on here? The one main house, 3,300 yeah, 3, square feet. Then that's what it is now. I think yeah. I'm planning on somewhere around, I think it's, 4,000 square feet or 3,900 or something. So we, what's, we number, sorry. what's number three where it says two-story structure under construction, 3,440 square feet, replacing residents? That's one of the other cottages I rebuilt that was up on the front part of the property. Okay, it's just confusing. Like, what's old? What's new? What's yeah, under that's construction? Ours. What gets to grow? It's all the way to the left of the image. And that, that's an older image. So there's a lot that's transpired since that time. And that is where some of the new new work is done so i think what we need to clarify is item one um, which is 3300 square feet um, typically we would give uh, a, a maximum rather than locking something down to its current size so i think we need to bring that up if you all want to include that in a motion if you decide to make a motion to accept that could be um, Four thousand forty-five <laughs> square feet, whatever that is, um, to allow for that slight expansion as we typically do. Um, number two is thirteen seventy-six um, to be permitted to go up to fifteen hundred. So that's got that expansion room. 
number three has got a size already the 3440. Probably I'll make that 3500 or maybe a little more just in case things change during the process. So, but I think it's mainly number one that we need to clarify what the actual upper limit is above where what the current size is. So it's, it doesn't sound to me like that's there's any friction there. That that's just a, I don't think so. No, I, would, I wouldn't be here if we'd already been through that. I thought yeah, yeah. I thought it worked with what I was trying to do. So I mean, I, my the reason I'm here. I mean, obviously, I could sell property and develop what I want to do with the property. I like to keep it. I just think it's an incredible piece of property. And I'm a Elmore County native, and I've owned and lived in many places in the county, but none. None as nice as this. It's an amazing piece of property. So I just feel like it deserves to stay sort of like it is. And I'm, I am a builder. And but if you know anything about what I've done over the last thirty years, it's predominantly been historical renovations. And if I build a new house, I call it a new old house. It looks like an eighteen hundreds house. So, so that's not... my passion. And that's this this property will look like it looked in seventeen ninety when it started, except that it'll be freshly painted and everything will be. Cleaned up and look nice, but it'll have the same look of that feel that it had then. Uh, so, what's a fair limit on the main house? If, that if you're you make for? that four thousand, that'll be that twenty percent. Yeah. Uh, I, I apologize. I should have thought to bring this with me. I just didn't. I thought we'd already had that in the. I thought you all knew the twenty. I thought the twenty percent was a was your rule. So I thought we knew that was a. Set, but so it's four thousand. I mean, is that fair? We want to add a little bit. I just can't remember. I've already got the permit. I can't remember the size. <laughs> it involved tearing off the back edition and replacing it with a little bit different one. And the other option, I'd, I'd have to get back with you. It's, it's also in the if it's forty five hundred, I know it's less than that. What I'm planning. Well, I, mean, I can't remember. For flexibility, I'd suggest forty five hundred for number yeah. one. Well, we could do that. Then I don't think we have to talk about it anymore because that's yeah. that what I'm good. planning. I think it's around four thousand square feet. I think the twenty percent essentially it's the same two over two large farmhouse with an addition on the back that I removed this falling down addition that's on there and rebuild it a little bit differently. So it's forty five hundred is off our starting point. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. larger than it's going to end up. So it would be consistent. And then the other cottages are a little over that, like twelve hundred square feet or thirteen hundred something. Like that. So you'll get that ten thousand square foot. Yeah, More. it's not going to be a mega mansion. That's not what I what I need. I need I need a lot less house actually, but. That's what we get. Yeah. <laughs> so the barn, I keep looking at that too. That's a heck of that's a big building right there. Yeah. Um, well, what's the footprint on that? Square feet. Uh, you know, I, I think they that's the county about. improvement numbers, they're they divided that up into several and called it. It's I like think a so. chicken house and then there's a barn. So and plus people did things on their own in those days without really even so I, late. I'm not going to claim a number. I guess attempting. And he's doing a lot of measuring all these structures yeah. and sending them to me. And, um, and you know, we'll verify the measurements from the aerials. And I don't plan to the use a barn way. commercially any other way than anybody else might use a barn on their property. I'm not saying that I'll never have a party there. <laughs> with, you know, one of my kids wants to get married there or something, but it's not going to be a commercial yeah. wedding venue. Nothing as long as I have it. Well, we worry about Subsequent that issues. timeline. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's, but it's it is a perfect space idea, for that. This is perfect. If anybody else so. thought that, that's what they would want. Yeah, it's, it is perfect for that. So part of our job is, is to protect against yeah. that, but not limit you too much. Of the right. our, our typical deed has a no commercial use restriction. I, I will say that I have to look at it and see, but. Thinking it allows uses that can be done inside the existing buildings. Non commercial use. So it permits educational and agricultural use. Yeah, I may be confusing with the AC stunt that I've been working on. It's You're talking about the outbuildings, the farm buildings. Yeah, our, our, our template even contains language for no commercial use other than that related to agriculture or education. So, the, Remember so that. industrial and commercial activities on the property are limited to the following. Um, it talks about A and B. Um, so those that are permitted A and B that can in fact be conducted within the permitted permitted buildings without material alteration. Activities other than those already permitted. 
So if there's an activity that could be conducted, and it's a commercial activity within the permitted building without material alteration to the external appearance. I don't know if that's 10,000 square feet. Well, the thing but you have to get the prior written approval of yeah. this body. That's not how, unless the deed is altered when I wasn't present, yeah. we, we've never allowed commercial use on any of our properties, other than that related to education, which is not commercial or agriculture. And we've, we've restricted it in practice to agricultural use for the produce of the property itself. And we and the Board of Supervisors have, have at least on one occasion, taken a landowner to task for importing material to be processed on site. Yeah. This is a key issue. It is a key issue. Remember, Virginia law you know, deems uh, events in certain agricultural pursuits as, as agricultural, which was the which sure. allows all of these. That, as you know, is being contested. I, I did not know that. No, that's being contested it's an open door and we, we we if you're going to be consistent with our prior desires would not include party activities in a 10,000 square foot barn as being permissible on a property under easement I agree with you. So so that, the, that would be subject to um, this body's approval as I read as I read it um, ac outdoor activities and these are commercial activities outdoor activities that do not permanently alter the physical appearance of the property and that do not impair the conservation values of the property and then your educational ones so i i mean i'm just reading the way the template reads now i don't have the history as to how it put it up on the screen that's the 2019 template um, that we worked on in the big revision back then um, so it is fairly limiting in in that well just to clarify the, the building is four thousand square feet across yeah yeah, yeah. Um, typically we allow 4500 for for farm buildings on properties well, this size. i don't think the d was intended to permit party lines um, i don't know i don't think it was and i don't think it does what i'm saying <laughs> is it seems to be ambiguous and then if you go, and if you go down to G, if I take the party outside the barn, <laughs> then it, that seems to permit it, as long as I don't alter the physical appearance of the property. The, the thing is that the way you know, we've had language like this, but much simpler in the deeds, pretty much from the beginning, and that allowed uses like home occupations that could happen in existing structures, but that. It's always taken to mean entirely in the existing structure. So party barns, you can have an existing barn and have a party and it's like, you can't have the party unless you have a parking lot. The parking lot is not contained within an existing structure. So you can't do it. Um, the, the language about activities within existing structures was intent to allow farms to continue their kind of home businesses they've always had home offices and things like that even if it's another business that the owners are operating but they have their office in their house or in their barn without violating the easement it was never intended to allow large-scale commercial operations that all that require driveways parking lots you know all of the improvements that would have to be done outside of those existing structures to make them happen well, this is a fine proposal um, and there's no need for us to occupy the time of the, of the donor on this issue. But, um, perhaps if we modify the dwellings as we specified before and um, not look too closely at the Language of the draft that we somewhat painfully. <laughs> <laughs> I had a full head of hair. Yeah. Well, a commercial <laughs> venture involves making money, right? I mean, that's what yeah. that that's what that means. It's not yeah. if I want to have a party with some of my friends in the bar, and that's not a problem. That's that's a that's not a commercial. No, and that's not the intent that we had of restricting. What we, we restrict what we what we are very wary of is a 
property like this, which would be a, a gem once you're oh, yeah. complete, yeah. that a subsequent owner takes advantage of that to create a hotel sure. or a dance hall or something on a large scale that has nothing related to history or right. agriculture. Understand. But not limit personal use to entertain. But commercial sort of means that. So yes. I have no commercial intentions with the property. So I don't think I don't think what I would be doing is going to be I don't have any plans to do anything at the moment with it, but put a basketball ball in the barn. But you know, I don't I'm like I say, it's a, it'd be a great place to have some friends over for a party sometimes, but that's not something I do a lot either. So but it's not a commercial venture, it would just be uh, something I would do personally. Not a charge at the door. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's commercial there. You can <laughs> create the wormholes here. Yeah. Uh... These are professional <laughs> easements. Probably. And and your intention is, we certainly appreciate that in your good faith, but the successor. Yeah, I understand completely. And my concern is from a drafting point of view, is to me it's better to be more specific. <laughs> yeah, what's small scale? We yeah, spent days on this. Huh? I know. I mean, we <laughs> in inflationary times, it might be pretty good. <laughs> right. So, I mean, there's a lot of language in that template about being subordinate. I mean, we spent days and days on this in 2019 oh, fixing this. Um, and again, it, you know, Dr. Musa said it's not really relevant to this specific proposal, but um, you know, we started with numbers and we started with outright bans, and that was uncomfortable. And so we made some flexibility that you all felt like you could build in for additional commercial uses as long as they were subordinate to kind of site productive use. And we balance that against making it a little vague that it requires us to be, uh, we can bring it to us, we'll let you know that you can do it. There are zoning considerations. I mean, there are yeah. there are special event restrictions that sure. you have to get yeah. special use permits sure. for. And you have to have a business application or license to do a commercial thing at the property. Right. So all those should be checkpoints along the way, I would think. And this day and age of social media too. So you know, Scott, can we can yeah, we, we know? The, <laughs> can we get to where we're trying to to, to go? And again, I, I agree with Chip that it's a slippery slope and. Um, you know, by saying um, no commercial events, no wine tasting, no, no wedding weddings for you know, more than two weddings a year for outside parties, just specifically name what, what we prohibit and and get there that way. And because the other ways are subject to interpretation. And I would have to get a special use permit from the county, I think, to have weddings or we discussed or all that extensively yeah. during yeah. the template of it. and that's kind of the point we started from was what if we just say none of the following and i think a lot of the members of the authority were uncomfortable with an outright ban and were much more comfortable with what's in there now which says you know if it's subordinate and if we approve it then it's permitted so that gave room for a judgment call and room for flexibility i hate to Revisit that entire discussion and inflict it on this one donor. I agree. <laughs> I don't want to rewrite the books. I was just coming in for half an hour. Simply say no, no, no events for hire. Building shall not be used for hire. Well, we had that discussion. Well, what if the you all didn't PC want to go there. Wants to have, in 2019 you know, because it gets to be. Not for hire. Yeah. Wasn't there language there somewhere? With Money changing hands. Well, so that's it's just a definition thing. of a commercial activity is the exchange of something of generally value. Generally, something of value <laughs> but do for we a good, a good or service. What's that? Do we define it though in there, in the template? No, I mean, maybe so that's, that's, that's just a do. definition of a commercial activity. I mean, there are party barns and wedding venues in Elmore County on farms that are in conservation easement. Tons of them. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so live next to two. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so not, it's not, not the least offender here of most of these people. Two. Oh, okay. Well, that may be not the not easements, be the not easements held by this body. I got you. I didn't know that. Yeah. I guess it depends. Each body has a different set of 
slightly slightly different yeah. rules, yeah. But you know, you, you yeah. said about the vineyard. What, what if he opened, planted vineyard, and then he had had tickets? Big tasting. I mean, these like, like it's been said, we we hash this out, and it's it's always uh, a challenge to anticipate every situation. And and if you leave it too vague, then it comes back to us and and say only with permission by this body. We get all that traffic and all those coming backs. So. Um, in the commercial, we've had we've had people want to you you know rent their stream Boulder stream for Boulder uh, car driving whatever. Yeah, that wasn't a good example of anything. Not too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, that's their stream, and they've got boulders in it, and they're going to rent it. You give you know, pay, we, pay we to come we, drive your four rock, wheeler up through the stream. We didn't there. take that. That one. was a <laughs> problem. No, but I mean that's that's right. how. Oh. That's a Land Rover test drive. I've done that in Europe. That's pretty cool, though. But, so this is a little different when we were going over the actual buildings, and Scott and Richie were saying, because we have seen these bounce back wanting to change the square footages or the buildings and stuff. So I, I do think putting in specifics and following the template that we have for dwellings and farm buildings and other structures, I know they're like three categories. And that we use that and instead of, I know you've got a great inventory laundry list. You did a we, good job yeah. of what used to be there, what's kind of there. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. Inside. Yes. So you can take that and run with it, I guess. But I think what we're trying to say is this is great, but if we have the templates and it's a little bigger number, that gives you wiggle room and whoever the next owner is um, works for them too. got that wiggle room correctly noted for the except the main house. Mm -hmm. which we missed we just which as we discussed earlier if we go with the standard 4500 that gives somewhat more than the 20 percent we were discussing and it's consistent with our other deeds and and, and the uh, other dwellings uh, are 34 and 1500 and yeah, if you want to just so i've 15. got for number one i've got a limit of 4500 number two there's a 1500 square foot limit and number three would be a 3500 square foot limit. right Shall we proceed on that basis? I think so. It, the other amendment is in terms of the other structures permitted. Um, it would be standard terms, except that no willful demolition of, of the structures identified as contributing. Right. Hey, can I ask one question? Though? Remember the rigor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Why were they? Why did we have them make sure they protected old structures? Even though they were about to fall down, why was that? Was it declared historic or something? That's an old, old place. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But it's an old easement. Nobody makes your fans. I mean, what what they had to maintain was would have fallen down. Okay, but they did. That was part of the deal. I'm just curious. Was that a historic designation on that farm? I don't know. Or that was that, was that was decades before our current acceptance criteria. <laughs> were adopted um, yeah. that was before that I dates the me a little bit, I but, but i'm just curious i, I just don't rec recall at least in in my tenure we've ever required maintenance that we prohibit destruction but mm -hmm. i know there's been debates over that and it's you can't but, force someone to expect to spend money that they may not have or and, and it gets sense. very very complicated and the discussion we had was that if you start requiring maintenance and design standards then you have to have an organization and staff that are capable of correctly interpreting and managing those designers, and we don't have that. The DHR does, but we don't. Was your question, David, that this, this is no willful destruct, destruction, not obligation to maintain? Okay, so it can just crumble and fall over. But you can't it, tear it, it can down. can be hit by lightning, but you can't can tear it down. But not by a bullet. Are you still using the, the language that we had from before? The, We're continuing to use the same language okay. that you had suggested. So if it's really gone to pieces. I think it's middle, middle ground language. 
Uh -huh. So where, where some of this caution comes from is that we feel protected by the commercial use and you know, by, you know, by the authority, but then what will happen is that somebody will use the agricultural aspect to wind around it sure. and then start the use and investment and construction, and we find the violation and then it puts us in a really difficult place. Right, I understand. I'm sure you deal with that a lot, I would think. Fortunately, not as many times <laughs> that wake me up at night. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. I guess it just seems like in order to do all these things, you would have to get a special use permit or a variance or something, which yeah. is then a checkpoint to, to shut that down. The county trigger. But would you like a motion? Yes, I would propose that we accept as proposed with the modifications uh, to the size of the main number one structure, 4,500 square feet. The other is two and three as on the summary, and the other standard language. I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one other question. Bless you for doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun, actually. I hope I haven't said anything wrong, but um, I have one other question, a little bit related to this. I heard the last person. Um, can the property never be sold? In other words, if I wanted to sell 50 acres of this property to somebody else, knowing that they're going to keep it in the same, you know, easement, but they're a new owner, is that that's not possible? Not possible. So the property has to remain in its full amount. Yeah, the IRS has recently stepped in on that. Um, it doesn't not a deal breaker for me. I just was curious about yeah. that. They've kind of changed the playing field under. As well, we had to amend existing agreements in terms of adjusting internal boundary lines. So that's a risk. any division Sorry. rights in this development rights, right? Yeah, there's some, probably five or six or seven. Those are being extinguished by the Sorry, I say those are being extinguished by these. Yeah, I wasn't suggesting sold off for someone to build a house. I meant just if somebody wanted to buy 50 acres for hay. It, knowing that it's in the same easement, mm -hmm. can that be done? You're saying that no. Not if the original easement doesn't make provision for that. I see. Mm -hmm. the, based on the size of the easement, could, if it's not big enough, it won't allow that. Doesn't it? But, but it would have to be also under easement. I mean, there's a boundary line adjustment clause in the standard mm -hmm. stuff, right? So, I mean, I, there's two things that, that that's going on. So then, um, he, in order to do that, he would have to come back to the spotting to ask for ask permission and, and to amend the easement, um, which that would be to the discretion of the body. Um, the other problem, as Jay mentioned, is if there's any IRS considerations, um, that, that would be, that's prohibited. So if you're looking at getting some um, either credit or a deduction. Right. The IRS says there can be no there can be no subdivisions, right. and a they boundary line to, adjustment is a subdivision. They would want to claw back those oh, yeah. things so that you just, yeah. If you want to do it, my position is. I don't. I was just curious. Yeah. You, know, you never no, know what may happen in time. And I would underscore that if, if you desire future ability to subdivide, this is the time to do it, not yeah. after. Yeah, it wouldn't to subdivide, but just for somebody to operate it under the same easement as an agricultural. Well, how about a lease? Yeah, you could do a lease or yeah. 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 You could do a lease. Just lease some of these, which is a little bit difficult to manage. And I just thought as time goes on, you know, if I don't want to deal with all of it, but I still want it to stay, you know, in its natural state, can somebody else buy it from me or part of it and just maintain it as I am? I have a hard enough finding people in the AK for free. Yeah, well, but it's still not free. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like, Except for very large properties over a thousand acres, we've not accepted any that prevent subdivision. Okay. But, well, I was just curious. I but I don't think we prevent a lease or. Um, yeah, as long as the easement might be different. Yeah, you just get somebody to borrow it for you. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's. So far, that's the majority working. Majority of we, people you know, probably you know, do that. What's I mean, going to happen if they outlaw diesel tractors? You don't know. You yeah. know what happens. In the future, I've become with it, I guess. They'll get an electric one, don't worry. <laughs> John Deere will handle it. <laughs> They'll have drones to, and robots to handle it. <laughs> so there will be know. something there. Geo well, thank you all very much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming to us. Good luck with this project. That's a yeah, well, beautiful looking place. We'll send some pictures when we're done.
Three zero. What's five our five next five. step? Uh, all right. Thanks. Get down. Appreciate it so much. Appreciate it. All right. You all have a nice night. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Right, is there any new business? I, I would just like to bring one thing up, and, and this is um, very much white clay, but I received an email today an e uh, of the draft of the um, Alamore County uh, stream buffer proposals. Yeah. And I haven't been able to go through it in any detail, but I'm just curious when that becomes a little uh, clearer with to what extent that uh, differs from our template. And, um, and so, and again, I believe that properties in conservation are exempt from the requirements as, as they're proposed, but I'm not possible about that. But so I think we just need to have an understanding if there's a delta between I, what there's an I, overlay I can, that's matching up. I can send everybody the announcement email that went out about that. Essentially what it's doing is taking the same uh, buffer locations that we have now under the water protection ordinance and moving them out of water protection and into the zone. So that rather than only applying to large projects that have erosion and sediment control plans, there are expectations for buffers countywide. That said, agriculture and forestry are exempt, so they have to be under state law. So uh, in a lot of cases for easements, they're not going to matter. Um, it's mainly going to matter for commercial and residential land. But um, there is a public input site that went up today. Uh, with the entire text of the proposed ordinance, I'll be happy to send you all and you can read it and yell at me about what it says. This, yeah. isn't, the, this isn't the rain tax in a new slicker, I hope. Uh, we haven't come up with a clever name for you. <laughs> Somebody will. Nice. So what you're saying basically is that the proposal as it's written is is correlated with, with what's in our template. It's just that the enforcement is moving. I think it's, it's correlated with what's in the existing ordinances. Right, and therefore yeah. our template. It, it's, yeah, it, it's not really in any way, it doesn't even really think about easements, I don't think. Uh, easements are typically gonna be, even that have buffer restrictions are probably gonna be more restrictive. It's not inconsistent. What's that? But, but, but the proposal is not inconsistent. Our no, no expectation. But if you send it around, we would be glad to have it. I got it this morning, this afternoon. I'll go ahead. I'm not sure that it exists. I'm just glad to have it. All right. Any old business? Have there been any um, requests for amended easements under the IRS safe harbor? Yeah. Oh, we, um, we had. Um, we had Maybe there were five. Had two in um, Forbes had three. I believe two or three. Um, the ones for Forbes have been executed. And the ones from Lee were, oh, I don't know if they were Lee. They were, no, the gentlemen in Northern Virginia were executed. Maybe we had one from Lee, two from Forbes. And just Forbes. the straightforward IRS proposed language. They, they, yeah, they follow up um, just the recipe. They, do the, they recite what they need to recite, and then they adopt the language from the IRS notice and bullet speak. Straight play. So. Yeah, we've been up to our next hearing. That's what I was dealing with outside. Was Frank Thomas has 12. Cool. <laughs> so. well, they follow a template, and so there's a template out there that, that people are using. And then they make a typo, and they refer to paragraph 12, but it's really 14, but yeah. Cross check those. I think that's not 100%, but that's, hopefully that's good. <laughs> Again, the final thought was well, be my problem. Right, exactly. <laughs> I had one bit of, I guess it's old business, which was just that somebody that I referred to you to, to you this afternoon, Joe Samuels, had a question about the justice easement and internal boundary line adjustments. So I looked at that and I have responded to James and to Scott to ask them to take a look at my proposed response. I mean, it seems to me internal boundary line adjustments are okay. Is that right or do you feel differently about that? No, I, I think that the, um, the deed permits several internal boundary, internal, because right now it's at two, they're up to, they're allowed to do five separate parcels. Mm -hmm. I think it has 50. 
a theatrical parcel that it's considered one can be divided up to not five times, four times. Right now, I think they're at two separate parcels. And so I think the internal boundary line adjustment's okay. Again, the same caveat, I don't know what the IRS is gonna think about that. That's, but that's for them to, to decide, not for us to decide. I Our, just really if, can't think that they are intending to address internal because it doesn't it's not logically consistent with what they're trying to get at you know? except the language talks about all boundary line adjustments it doesn't, it doesn't distinguish between internal or external so you just said irs and logically consistent so mm. i <laughs> i am just you know, i don't know why you want to poke these but yeah, maybe you do. Right. what do you get when you cross the godfather with an irs agent an offer you can't understand. <laughs> That's a good one. I can go with the minutes if you like. I think we'll end on that. Attributed to Steve Small. Motion to adjourn. Second. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much. Morally protected, James Scott, thank you all. Kim, thank you for attending again.